Palaki. Kanaya Lalaki. Jai Kanaya Lalaki. Hati Koda Palaki. Oh, Jai Kanaya Lalaki. This is that there is great happiness in the house of Nanda Maharaj. And he is giving in charity so many wonderful gifts because of his happiness. <laughs> what is that happiness? Mm. Who knows? He could try. <laughs> Starts with a K. We're the crazy lovers of Krishna. No, that's not it. <laughs> Krishna. If there's only one word in the whole language of all the words in the world, all the languages, then you only need one, Krishna. <laughs> Two, actually, Hare. Without the Hare, the Krishna is, is not complete. <laughs> okay, this is a beautiful verse from the uh, ninth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 24. The title of the chapter is called Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and this is text number 66. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jatokata Priti no Jatokata Priti Griha Raja Eta Arta Jatokata Priti Griha Raja Eta Advam Rupam Sutta Satani Kirtu Rudaraha Upadyate shupurusham krati beer sami Atmanam atman digamam patiyan janesu. Jato gata priti grihad raja eki tarto. Advam rupam suta satani kitori daraha. Upadyate shupurusham kriti krati beer sami jay. Advanam atmanigamam pratihan janesu. Jato gatam priti griham raja eki tarto. Advam rupam suta satani kitori daraha. Upadyate shupurusha krati beer sami Atmanam atmanigamam pratiyam janesu. Shakra 
Sutu Satani Kitori Daraha Pada Tesu Purushaka Tibir Samije Admanam Atmanigaman Pratiyam Janeshu Ladies <laughs> Jato kata kriti griha rajam eti arto. Hadvani pansuta satani kito ridaraha. Udpadate shukurushakrati bir samiche. Atmanam Atman Higaman Pratiyam Janeshu Jato Gata Priti Griham Prajameti Arto Advan Rupam Suti Satani Kito Riduraha Udpadya Tesha Purusham Krati Bhisimi Jai Admana Matma Nigamam Pratiyam Janeshu Anyone else? Jato Gatam Priti Griha Brajamedi Arto Advan Rupam Sudhatani Kitar Vidaha Udpadya Tesha Purusham Krati Bir Samije Advan Matma Nigaman Pandyajaneshu Jata after taking birth as the son of Vasudeva, Gata went away, Pritir Grihat, from the houses of his father, Rajam, to Vrindavan, Edhati Artha, to exalt the position of Vrindavan. 
Hadva, killing there. Ripun, many demons. Sutta Satani, hundreds of sons. Krita Uru Dara, accepting many thousands of wives. The best of women. Utpadya, begot. Teshu, in them. Purusha, the Supreme Person who exactly resembles a human being, exactly being. Katubi, Katubi, by many sacrifices, sacrifices. Samidye, worshipped, worshipped. Atmanam, Atmanam, himself, himself. Because, he is the person, because he is the person, worshipped by all sacrifices. sacrifices. Atmanigamam, Exactly according to the ritualistic ceremonies of the Vedas. Pratyayan, expanding the Vedic principles. Janesu, among the people in general. Mm. So this is towards the very end of the ninth chapter. This is the second to the last verse. And it's introducing the tenth canto. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, <coughs> known as Lila Purushottam, appeared as the son of Vasudev, but immediately left his father's home and went to Vrindavan to expand his loving relationship with his confidential devotees. In Vrindavan, the Lord killed many demons, and afterwards he returned to Dwarka, where according to Vedic principles, he married many wives who were the best of women, begot through them hundreds of sons, and performed sacrifices for his own worship to establish the principles of householder life. Mm. A little bit of a summary of some of the activities of the Lord. Purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 15.15, Vedaishya Savar Aham Eva Vedya, by all the Vedas, it is Krishna who is to be known. Lord Sri Krishna, setting the example by his own behavior, performed many ritualistic ceremonies described in the Vedas and established the principles of Grihastha life by marrying many wives and begetting many children just to show people in general how to be happy by living according to Vedic principles. The center of Vedic sacrifice is Krishna, Vedaishya Savam Aham Eva Vedya. To advance in human life, human society must follow the Vedic principles personally demonstrated by Lord Krishna in his householder life. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in the loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Reciprocation of the loving affairs and ecstasy are possible only in Vrindavan. Therefore, just after his appearance as the son of Vasudeva, he left, the Lord left immediately for Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Lord not only took part in loving affairs with his father and mother, the gopis and the cowherd boys, but also gave liberation to many demons by killing them. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.8, Paritranaya sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam. The Lord appeared in order to protect the devotees and to kill the demons. This was fully exhibited by his personal behavior. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord is understood by Arjun to be Purusham Shasvatam Divyam, the eternal, transcendental, supreme person. Here we also find the words Utpadya Teshu Purusham. Therefore, it is to be concluded that the absolute truth is a person, is Purusha, a person. The impersonal feature is but one of the features of his personality. Ultimately, he is a person. He is not impersonal. And not only is he Purusha, a person, but he is the Lila Purushottam, the best of all persons. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale 
Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakopa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Bhae Bhaja Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Borrowing from this explanation here, we get a little insight of the actual essence of the Lord's appearance in this world. Of course, he performed many activities, and all of these activities he performs for two reasons. One, for his own transcendental pleasure, and for the benefit of others. <laughs> he never acts simply for his own pleasure. He always includes others in that <coughs> activity, and they also benefit. So in Prabhupada makes one very poignant statement right to the point. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance was to manifest how one can take part in loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, the living entity in the material world is in a very, what we say, marginal situation. The situation is unnatural. We are eternally a loving servitor of the Lord in the spiritual world. But somehow or other, let me use that word, somehow or other, we're here. We came here. So the idea, and that's one of the reasons why Krishna comes, as he says, yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata, abhutanam adharmasya tridatmanham srijami aham is to uh, give you his association, attract you to him through that, and uh, bring you back to him in loving service. And it explains that by absorbing our intelligence, <coughs> mind, and senses, in hearing the glories of the Lord, along with performing activities for the pleasure of the Lord, one can purify their consciousness from all material attachments and ultimately achieve the supreme goal of life. Or you might also say the only goal of life and that is to again exchange loving relationships with the Supreme Lord. And it explains, Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, one of the more most important verses, um, Janma Karma Chime Divyam evam yo veti tattvataha taktva deham purna janma naiti mameti sarjana that one who knows now the word knows needs to be described in a somewhat extensive way one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities in this world does not upon leaving this body again return to this material world but attain, he's speaking to Arjun, but he attains to my abode, or Arjun. In other words, this is the uh, characteristic of one who has achieved perfection. They understood, at least to a, there were no, because no one can know Krishna. <laughs> it's not possible. Even he can't know himself. He appears in his different forms to perform his activities. But in his form as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's trying to understand himself from the position of his pure devotee internal energy, energy Srimati Radharani. So, but this is a qualitative statement, so therefore one should try to know as much about Krishna as possible. And this is the process of bhakti. The bhakti is to try to use your intelligence, minds, activities, and to know Krishna. And knowing Krishna comes in two ways. 
one is by hearing about him and glorifying him and the other is by executing devotional service. Both of these bring knowledge. Not only the philosophical parts, but also the activities of devotional service also awaken one's transcendental love for the Lord through the process of bhakti. Mm -hmm. So Krishna, when he comes to this material world, he has a mission. And that <coughs> mission has been described to give pleasure to his devotees. But here it mentions here, and of course, also it's included in this narration that he kills the demons. He makes the world more suitable for people to live because whenever there are demons, there is disturbances and nobody can live peacefully when the demons are here. <laughs> so uh, therefore the Lord in order to remove them and also to give them an opportunity to take advantage of being his eternal servant, but of course they're not aware of it, he kills them and that is his mercy. <laughs> and they get liberation in different ways. But here it says that he's called Lila Purushottam. He likes to perform his activities in a loving relationship. So we know the story, how the Lord appeared in the jail cell of uh, Kamsa on the wedding day of Vasudeva and Devaki. Uh, there was a grand celebration. Many people were happy. Vasudev had now attained a beautiful wife, or very qualified, Devaki. She was the uh, daughter of Devaka, a great king. And uh, now the celebration is about to begin, but they have to go to the home of Vasudev. So then there's, they need some conveyance. So. Kamsa, who is also related, he is the brother of, of Devaki. He wants to do some service for his sister. Very nice. <laughs> brothers should do things for their sisters, and sisters should do things for their brothers. <laughs> and the scriptures actually say that one sister is a personification of mercy. <laughs> so if you have a sister, you get, you're supposed to get mercy from her. <laughs> Sometimes it's not like that, but the mercy comes in another form. <laughs> it's kind of like a different kind of mercy. But, but it should be beneficial in some way. <laughs> But that is, the, that, is, that is the statement from Shastra. And so Kamsa now, he wants to show his uh, kindness to his sister. So he says, let me dra drive the chariot. I want to take them to their, their home. But as he's about to do that, he hears this uh, voice from the sky. Kamsa, you fool. <laughs> you don't know that the eighth son of your sister will be the cause of your death. <laughs> So being of demoniac mentality, he immediately overreacts <laughs> or acts in the way of demons. And he uh, takes out his sword. He's ready to kill his sister. Can you imagine on her wedding day? And it's his sister also. Uh, he has no compunction for anything other than his own, you know, self-interest, which is really not his self-interest. It's just his selfish interest. And so, but Vasudev acts fast, and he stops him with words of uh, philosophy. And he tries to pacify, and um, Kamsa stops for a minute to listen to Vasudev, because he has a lot of respect for Vasudev. And uh, so Vasudev is, is, is speaking in different ways that, you know, hey Kamsa, you know we all have to die. <laughs> You know, death is inevitable for the one who has a material body. And so, you know, you shouldn't act in a sinful way to cause yourself to suffer more because death will come anyway. So, but Kamsa is not going for that one. He doesn't like that philosophical presentation. 
So Vasudeva can see he has to do something more direct. So now he says, well, actually, you know, Jai Shishi Panchatattva Ki Jai. And he starts to think, oh, well, it's the ace son, so Kamsa, I will give you my word that I'll deliver all of the children to you for your own disposal. In other words, it's whatever you want to do. So Kamsa understands that Vasudeva is a man of character, he's a man of trust, so he agrees and he desists. But still he's concerned, so he locks both of them up in his jail cell in Mathura. And then uh, now they're there. And as each of the sons are being born, six sons in a row, uh, Vasudev, of course, he's not very happy to do this, but he's trying to save the life of his sister because he knows that the Supreme Personality of Godhead will appear as the eighth child. So he's going to worry about that later. <laughs> Right now he has to deal with the immediate situation. It's to pacify Kamsa from killing his sister and his wife. So uh, eight, eight children are delivered. Now, six children, I'm sorry, six children are delivered. Now, there is a, before the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears, he also appears with his eternal associate, which is also his older brother, in this case, Sri Balaramji. Now, it was, it was destined that Balaram would appear also within the womb of Devaki. And the Supreme Lord wanted to protect Balaram from Kamsa. So he contacts uh, 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 the internal energy of the Lord, Yoga Maya, and he says, I have some seva for you. <laughs> And she's ready, and he says, "You have, when Devaki becomes pregnant, then you have to take the child out of her womb and transfer it to Vrindavan, into the womb of Rohini, because Rohini is also one of the wives of Vasudeva, and she's staying there with Mother Yasoda, and they're in the Vrindavan. So she went there to get protect, protection. So now, this was the plan, but." Yoga Maya is thinking, how can I do that? <laughs> this is to move the Supreme Personality of Godhead from one womb to another. I need some extra Shakti. <laughs> and so she prays to the Lord, please, only because of your desire I will try to carry it out, but only by your mercy can it, be, can it actually happen. This is a very... Uh, essential principle in our execution of devotional service. The success of our devotional service really comes by our effort and by the mercy of the Lord. But if we don't pray for the mercy of the Lord, or don't take shelter of that mercy, then we may fall short in our execution of devotional service. We, we even, even though we may have great intelligence, great abilities, have done things in the past where successfully, a devotee never thinks that it is by me that things are happening. He makes an effort, she makes an effort, but at the same time he understands without the mercy of the Lord, nothing is successful, and nothing is possible even. So the Lord, uh, gives her an affirmation, yes. And then, of course, Balaram. So Ro Devaki, at one point, she, really, she thought she had a miscarriage. She lost her child. And Rohini at the same time. And all of a sudden, Balaram was safe. And he took birth in Vrindavan. And now, the uh, eighth child is about to appear. And so... When everyone is asleep at midnight on a particular uh, auspicious occasion, the Supreme Lord in his forearm form as Vaikuntha Krishna with Narayan Krishna forearms, 
He appears in full regality. He's got all of these, got his ha helmets, jewelry, everything. He's decorated beautifully. And he takes birth, and he actually appears. Now, we actually can't say the Lord actually takes birth. This is just a euphemism, just to give some description of, of what is actually happening. The Lord never takes birth because he is unborn. Sometimes it says the unborn takes birth. But what does it mean? How do we understand that? The Lord is eternal and therefore he is appearing in different places according to his transcendental desire. And the analogy is just like, to use just an analogy, a simple analogy, you're probably all aware of it, that when the sun uh, comes up in the morning, it appears that it comes over the eastern horizon. So it says that the eastern horizon is the mother of the sun. <laughs> and then the sun travels throughout the cosmos, traversing the sky. And then, and later on in that same day, it goes down over the western horizon, and it disappears from the view. And so, people used to think, mistakenly, <laughs> that the sun takes birth every day and dies in the evening, and then it gets reborn again. That used to be, just imagine how simplified people were in their understanding of something that is so, you know, it's so natural to understand. But in the same way we even see now, people who believe what is people saying, the scientists, the doctors, or they, we're still believing in it and they're still lying. They don't know anything. <laughs> And people still think, oh yes, they're so intelligent because they're in a position of authority. But therefore, only through Shastra can we understand. Guru, Shastra, Sadhu, can we understand what is the principles that make up the truth, both in our practice and in the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So. Krishna, he's, uh, he's appearing in different universes to perform his transcendental pastimes with his devotees, and he's going from one universe to another. <laughs> so just like the sun appears and disappears, he appears and disappears, and, but appear, it says that he is born, and then of course, sometimes people say he dies, but that's not a good word either. <laughs> it says that actually he disappears by his own sweet will. It's almost like a magician. A magician can perform so many tricks, and people think, wow, how did he do that? <laughs> you know, there used to be this one magician, his name was Houdini. He was pretty good. <laughs> uh, he was very popular for many years. He, they would uh, take him, wrap him in, in ropes, put him inside a box, and throw the, and seal the box, and throw the box in the ocean or in the river, and then he would come out. <laughs> Just a few years ago, maybe about maybe about a decade ago, one mag mag <coughs> magician appeared in America, and he said, "I will make the Statue of Liberty disappear." <laughs> that big Mataji standing there with the holding her, you know, lamp. And he did it. <laughs> he put a curtain in front of it, and then he pulled it away, and she was gone. <laughs> Everybody thought, what? <laughs> there goes our country. She's the symbol of liberty. <laughs> but then again, after a few moments, he did his next step of his program, and he brought her back. <laughs> so yeah, if you know the art, you can do it. <laughs> And Krishna is Yogeshwara, he's the master of all mystic powers. So to understand his activities is not possible simply by, we say, material calculations or even great intelligence. Therefore we understand that he appears, he can appear anywhere and at, at any time. And when he does, he performs his activities for his pleasure and for the pleasure of devotees. So now he appeared in the jail cell of Kamsa. And Devaki, she's overwhelmed with joy, but at the same time, she's thinking, 
Kamsa is going to find out. And if he finds out, then he'll kill the child. So she has this mixed emotion. It's motherly love, but at the same time, it's in the mood of protective. She wants to protect him. She's thinking how. And after offering nice prayers to him and offering the obeisances, she says, please disappear. <laughs> because we're afraid that, you know, you'll be... So uh, how is it possible that the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be, you know, destroyed by any, anything? But still, her motherly mood, her, her Vatsalya love, is so strong, she's feeling it like that. And you see that in all of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna covers his devotees and they, they have a relationship in a particular mood and they also see him as being vulnerable to the material energy. But that's his, that's his love for his devotees so they can love him directly and not simply worship him in the mood of awe and reverence. And so now Krishna disappears and then he comes, but he comes back as a little child. And then, then Vasudev takes the opportunity. He wants to protect the child. It's late in the evening. And by the arrangement of the Lord, all of the guards in the jail fell asleep. The chains fell off Vasudev. And the door of the jail cell opened automatically by the Lord's arrangement. And then the Lord, then Vasudev took that child and in the middle of the night, and the night was very, actually a rainy night, so it wasn't very easy. So he had to cross through the Jamuna River and get to Vrindavan. He wants to take Krishna to Vrindavan. So Krishna's there, a little baby, and he's carrying him. And everything seems to be okay. But then he goes into the Jamuna, and he's waiting in the Jamuna. But the Jamuna starts getting turbulent soon as he gets in there. <laughs> and Krishna did that because Jamuna wanted to get the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord. So she started to make her waves turbulent. So Vasudev couldn't hold the child, he dropped her. And he dropped it in the Jamuna. <laughs> of course Vasudev is now, to use a very simplistic word, freaking out. <laughs> He's trying to find the child. And, uh, but Jamuna's enjoying the whole idea now. Krishna's bathing in my water. He's getting, she's getting all of his mercy. And then finally Krishna surfaces and Vasudeva is happy, picks up the child and he continues on. It's still a very late at night. It's somewhere in the early morning hours. And uh, he goes to the place of residence where Nandam and Yasoda stay. Now everyone is asleep there, and it just so happens that that Mother Yasoda just gave birth to, now it mentions a girl, but actually the Shastras say something else. Although they acknowledge that was the apparent birth, but there was something else. That Krishna also appeared in Vrindavan in, in, in an unmanifested form. So Vasudev wants to protect Krishna, so he puts baby Krishna down from, from Mathura, and he picks up the girl, and he returns to the jail cell. Now, when he put that baby down, because Yasoda actually gave birth to a boy and a girl, and then, as it mentions in the 10th canto, the two Krishnas became one. And then he was Vrindavan Krishna with the mood of Vaikuntha Krishna in. Because it says Vrindavan Krishna doesn't kill demons. He does it with his manifestation of Vaikuntha Krishna or Vishnu Narayan. And therefore, he, they both, both aspects of the Supreme Personality of God had manifested in Vrindavan. And then Vasudev returns. He has the girl. There's an alert, the eighth child was born. But Kamsa gets really all excited, at the same time quite fearful. 
and he's running to the jail cell. He comes and he sees, and Devaki is there, and she's holding this little girl. And she says, my dear brother, this is actually a girl. You have no fear from him, her. And uh, Kams is confused. <laughs> These prophecies you can never trust. You know? <laughs> so, but he's getting, uh, he still has his very ruthless and very cruel mentality. So he tries to take the child away, but she's resisting. And she's pleading with him, begging him, praying to him, please, this, this, you have no fear from this girl. Please let, her, let me have this child. Can't hear anything. Prabhupada said, the demons are so cruel, they'll do anything. When Prabhupada was talking about demons, he said, they'll do anything, they'll do anything. <laughs> they'll kill their own brothers, fathers, mothers, anyone, just to satisfy their own selfish interests. And so he takes the child away, and now he's about to kill her and dash her on a rock. He holds her up in the air and he's ready to throw her down, but she's yoga mile. <laughs> she's powerful. She slips out of his hand, she comes up in the sky with eight arms, she says, Kamsa, you rascal. <laughs> now his worshipable deity is Durga Devi. So now he's seeing his actual worshipable deity there in front of him, because demons you know, they also worship Durga because she also can fulfill material desires. So now she's just chastising him for his foolishness. And then he realizes, oh my God, <laughs> that's my worshipful deity, Durga. And so he becomes a little humble, pacified, and then you know, she disappears. And then she says, also, the, that child that would be the cause of your death has already been born. <laughs> So he gets a little message. <laughs> and these demons, and Kamsa, now he's a little humble. And he starts apologizing to Devaki for all, all of the atrocities he's done. And she's, because she's a devotee, she has no enmity towards her brother. Although she was fearful of what he might do, she never had any hatred towards him. She just realizes he, who he is, he's a demon. <laughs> Sometimes you have a brother or a sister who's like a demon, you know, but what can you do? You still love them because it's your sibling, right? <laughs> there are devotees who have that. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes demons and devotees are born in the same family. It's like that. And uh, so now, uh, and Krishna is there. So it here and mentions how Krishna wanted to come to Vrindavan to perform his activities with his devotees. And this is the, uh, the process of devotional service to exchange loving relationship with Krishna by hearing about his pastimes, especially in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So Krishna appears in this world to perform his pastimes for the pleasure of himself and for the purification of the world and for the happiness of all of his devotees. And in these pastimes he appeared, what did he start doing? He started killing demons right away. Who was the first demon? Was it Sakadasura, the cart demon? Was that he was the first one? I think he was. Putana was before him? Yeah. Putana came first. Okay. So Putana, inter interesting, because it says Kamsa represents uh, irreligion and uh, a demon. <laughs> and Putana represents uh, religion, uh, irreligion in the disguise of religion. Irreligion in disguise. This is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's commentary on this particular pastime. She appears as a beautiful lady. Uh, she's a hideous demon, but demons, at least at those times, had power to change their form. So she changes her form into this beautiful, voluptuous lady. So nice. She comes to Vrindavan. Everyone's attracted to her. Who is she? Some demigoddess? 
And she goes right to the house of uh, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda. And she wants to offer some service to Krishna by offering her breast milk. But her whole program is that she has put this deadly poison on her breast milk. And then she's thinking, I'll kill Krishna like this. So this is very interesting also to understand how that in the name of religion, sometimes people practice irreligion. And this is a very important part of our understanding of the process. Because what is real religious principles? Real religious principles is to worship the Supreme Lord in devotion with a desire to please Him under the guise of His pure representative, the spiritual master. But when the when eternal religious principles appear in the world, the Kamsas get, uh, get unhappy. And therefore they send out their Putanas in the disguise of real religion and in order to subvert and divert and ultimately destroy religion gradually through the process of irreligious propaganda. And so this is Putana. And now she comes in there and everyone is thinking, oh yeah, she can do some nice service. And so she's there. And she, Krishna knows everything though. Krishna is only a little tiny baby. I think he's about three months old, or even before that, wasn't he? He was three months old when, no, Sakadashura, he was about a year old. No, was, he was nine months old. Nine months old, yeah. So this is even before then. And uh, so she picks up the baby, thinking this is the end of this child who was actually a great personality. She doesn't know he's the Supreme Lord, but she knows he's a very powerful person. And Kamsa's actually sending all of these demons into Vrindavan because he hear, heard that the Supreme Lord is there. The, the demons think, mistakenly think, that they can kill God. They actually believe that. <laughs> When we were preaching in Argentina, and uh, we had many difficulties with the local government, um, and they were always giving us harassment, and finally at one point they shut our temple down and closed the whole show there. And there was one senior devotee who was preaching there. He came to Prabhupada and told him the whole story. He said, Prabhupada said, yes. They say, now you're dead. And after that, they can't do anything. <laughs> In other words, you can't kill eternal religious principles simply by either legislation or by physical. Because it is, the, it is the mission of the Lord. It will go on. But the demons think otherwise. So they try different ways. So it's interesting. Krishna killed one demon after another, after another, after another. And he's enjoying all of this. <laughs> He enjoys everything he does. And because he also wants to give mercy to these personalities who appear at the same time. Someone asked me the other day, can we arrange our life to be killed by Krishna? I was just talking about demons. I was thinking, hmm, well, he's killing you anyway <laughs> through the material energy. <laughs> but. They want a direct, you know, you know, injection. So I said, don't play, don't play around. Don't try to be a demon just so you get killed by Krishna. That person was thinking, yeah, it sounds like a good deal, you know. <laughs> but I was thinking it's not very intelligent. <laughs> because Krishna might neglect you because he knows your program. <laughs> so, but these are demons, they don't want to be killed by Krishna. And it's interesting, they, one of the features of bhakti is to please Krishna. And the demons please Krishna by fighting with Krishna, by giving him some competition. And Krishna likes that. So he's enjoying that. But fortunately, because 
they don't try to please Krishna, which is the pre preacher, the principle of bhakti. As uh, Rupa Goswami says, Alyabila Sita Sunya, Gyanakamaranavritam, Anukulena Krishna Siladam, Bhakti Uttama. A pure devotional service must contain these four principles. And two of them is to serve Krishna with the pleasure of pleasing Krishna. So without the, the desire to please Krishna in, in the execution of devotional service, it's not complete. And so the demons, they don't try to please Krishna, but they do because he likes to fight. And so they get killed and they get liberation. Usually Sahuja Mukti, which means they merge into the unmanifested form of the Lord or into his bodily effulgence, one of the two, depending on the quality of their demonic activities and who they are actually. So, and so one after another, but there's a class of people who worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They like to hear about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan with, with, his, with the gopis. When Krishna dances in the Rasa dance or when he performs some of his more, what we say, secluded pastimes with his devotees. And but when they when you they when we when we talk about demons or they hear about Krishna killing demons they say no, no we're not interested in that. <laughs> but when the cowherd boys when every time Krishna killed a demon, Jai, well done, well done, well done, they enjoy that. <laughs> One time, Krishna killed a demon, and. Uh, all the cowherd boys got around them and said, Hey, Krishna, how'd you do that? Yesterday I beat you in wrestling, and now you killed this big demon. I couldn't do that. Yeah, yesterday I all, another boy says, Yeah, I took his lunch away, and he started crying. He killed this big demon. And they're, and they're all getting around, and they're kind of like guessing. And Krishna's just remaining quiet. So finally one of them says, yeah, it's his mother. It's mother, yeah. She's the cause. She puts these armlets and amulets on his arms and legs, and he has power, and that's how he does it. <coughs> Another boy says, hmm, no, yeah, it is his mother, but it's not like that. She gives him a secret mantra. He's got this mantra-killing demon. So they're going back and forth. And then finally Krishna says, want to know? Yeah. <laughs> they get all excited. Oh, Krishna's going to tell us. All right, so they gather around. Krishna's going to tell us how he kills things. Well, he said, you know, when I was first born, uh, there was a very great sadhu, great, great spiritual person. He came to see my father. And they had a private meeting, and he said, this child of yours is really very special. He is almost as good as Narayan. In fact, he is Narayan. Told my father that. So if you want to know how I do it, I'm God. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> and they look at each other like, what is he, joking or something? <laughs> He's God. <laughs> and they're all laughing. Finally, they all start laughing at Krishna, and Krishna starts laughing too. <laughs> so, so after some time, they said, let's go play. <laughs> It's a beautiful pastime and happened in a place called Hush, Hushyaban. Hushya means laughter. And it's a place of un unlimited laughter or continuous laughter. And when Krishna spoke this, all the, everybody just laughed and laughed and laughed. Nobody believed him. So yeah, so uh, he remains always in that mood of an ordinary personality, a little extraordinary. Everyone knows that Krishna is the best in Vrindavan, but nobody thinks he's God. 
And if he, if he somehow reveals it, or even acts in a very godly way, they just think, oh, maybe God came and helped him. That's how he did it. <laughs> they don't understand his actual transcendental nature. Okay. So, I don't know how long I'm supposed to speak, <laughs> but it's already 9.15. Uh, Ananta, continue, or um, should we end here? Do you have, you telling me keep going? Okay. Okay. I'll keep going. We have another pastime. What is Krishna's name when he steals butter? Makancho, right? And he likes to steal butter. I mean, sometimes when you grow up in this world, what is your favorite thing to eat? It's butter and bread. Wow. Can't beat it. It's better than eating pizza sometimes. <laughs> so butter is really nice, especially when you spread it on bread and the bread is so soft. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go to the bakery and get this really hot loaves of bread and pour nice butter on it. It was like we are in ecstasy. The highest form of self uh, happiness. So Krishna likes to steal butter. So he was stealing butter. So one lady in, in Vrindavan, her name was Padmavati, she came to Mother Yasoda. Your son is always taking my butter. I try to catch him, but he's so fast I can't get away, but I know it's him. I want you to chastise him. Mother Yasoda, what are you saying? We have nice butter, milk, and so many nice things. Why would he go steal from you? I don't think so. I don't, I don't believe you. So she doesn't know what to do. She leaves. She's thinking, well, I'm going to catch him. I'm going to catch him. So she makes a plot. She puts the butter on the, high on the rafters on some ropes, and she puts it in a very remote place in the house, one of the smaller rooms in the back. And then she's thinking, hmm. well, you know, he sneaks in and sometimes I don't see him. So he thought, I'm going to put bells on the pot. So when he grabs the pot, the bells will ring and then I'll catch him. And she said, all right, yeah, that's a good plot. Yeah, but actually he comes through this window, that I know. So I'm going to put some bells, she puts bells on the window. So now the trap is set. Krishna's walking along. He's there with Madhu Mangal. And Madhu Mangal is there, and they're just joking together. Because Madhu's always joking with Krishna. They're always just like, not, not at this point, but a lot of time when, after Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill, Everybody thought, how did he do it? Mato said, I gave him the power. I'm a Brahmin. <laughs> Brahmatagious. <laughs> it was because of me he was able to live Gopur. <laughs> so they joke. So Mato's like that. So he jokes. So now they're together. Mato does this thing. He puts his hand underneath his arm and he goes like this, makes that funny sound. Kids used to do that when you, you know, you're small and you, your mother gets no, annoyed by that, you know. <laughs> so, so he does that and he said, now give me a ladu. <laughs> he likes ladus. <laughs> and so they're joking and then Krishna says, hey, here's that house with the nice butter. Let's go. Milo says, yeah. Oh, look, there's bells on the window. You know, it looks like a trap. Krishna said, don't worry. Bells are my servants. Bells don't ring. So they go, he opens the window, bells are completely quiet. <laughs> Goes in the house, it's dark, he's walking through, Manu's there trying to find the butter. Krishna's got natural effulgence, kind of lights up everything. He's looking at it. Finally gets to the room and says, there's the butter. <clears throat> Madhu says, there it is. Yeah. But there's bells on the pot. 
Krishna said, that's okay. Bells don't ring. <laughs> so Krishna stands on a chair, reaches up, grabs the butter pot, tips it over, puts his hand, and as soon as he's about to, he gives some to Madhu, then he's about to eat some, and then all of a sudden the monkeys come. His main monkey is Daddy Loba. <laughs> Dahi Loba. Yeah, one who is greedy for milk products. <laughs> His favorite monkey. So he comes every time Krishna steals butter or eats butter. And the monkey brings all his friends and they're all there and Krishna's feeding all the monkeys and they're having a nice time. Krishna's enjoying, he likes to give out prasad. <laughs> so after everyone's getting enough butter, and so then bam, Krishna starts thinking, I'm going to have some. So he reaches into the pot, pulls out the butter, starts eating it, and all of a sudden, ding a ling 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 all the bells start ringing. They go, let's go. They get out of there. What happened? I don't know. And they ran out the door, and Manu said, You told me the bells are not going to ring. Krishna said, Yeah, I don't know what happened. Wait a minute, we got to find out. So let me call the demigod of bells. So there's a demigod in charge of bells. <laughs> so he comes and he's all dressed in bells. <laughs> and he comes, big demigod, pays his obeisance. He says, my dear Lord, you called me? Yes. I told you not to ring. Yes, that's true. But you also, we also know that every time you eat, we have to ring. So Krishna is defeated. <laughs> Can't say anything. So then Padmavati comes running out of the house. She said, I, mean, I got you. She grabs Krishna's hand. Now I'm going to take you to Mother Yasoda and she's going to punish you. But then she thinks, I have to pass by Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj, he's always so lenient. He never punishes Krishna for everything. So I have to hide Krishna. So she takes her sari, toom, puts it over his head. And now she's walking, holding Krishna's hand with her sari over Krishna. Passes by Nanda, goes into the house. There's mother, Yasoda. She said, Mataji, I caught him. And she lifts up her sari. And mother Yasoda starts laughing. She says, that's not my son, that's your son. <laughs> And she looks, and it's her son. <laughs> Mother Yasoda said, that's her. You've been churning too much butter lately. Just relax. <laughs> take a break. <laughs> Go take some rest. And she's totally bewildered. She doesn't know what to do. And she walks out, and she's walking back to her house, and she's come completely bewildered. And Chris comes, Krishna comes running up to her and says, Mataji, next time you do that, I'm going to become your husband. <laughs> so Krishna never loses. <laughs> so if you want to be on the winning team, it's Krishna's team. <laughs> he never loses. <laughs> Stay in devotional service. Whatever, even if it gets difficult, things get rough, and things are reversed, don't worry. Krishna's still there. You'll always be successful. Stay in devotional service. Even if the worst thing in the possible can happen to you still. If you're connected with Krishna, ultimately you'll achieve perfection in life. And that is to go back home, back to Godhead. <coughs> so these are the wonderful pastimes of the Lord. The Lord likes to perform his pastimes. for the, And this that's why he's called Lila Purushottam. He simply appears just to exchange loving relationships with his devotees. He does it even without his appearance. Even now, as we engage in devotional service, that loving relationship is developing, and it can even become very strong when one can perceive the presence of Krishna at every moment in one's dev devotional life. And that comes by seriously hearing the glories of the Lord, chanting the glories of the Lord, 
especially the, ch the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that is the direct means by which we can awaken our love for Krishna through the holy name. But his pastimes are so nice and so unique that uh, you know, Sukadeva Goswami, when he was narrating uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Pariksit, he, he narrated for six days. And after the sixth day, he, he turned to Maharaj Pariksit and he said, Are you feeling tired? you want some water or something? And Maharaj Pariksit said, No, this is what I'm waiting for, the tenth canto. Please continue. He was eager to hear those pastimes in Vrindavan. And so Sukadeva Goswami became twice as enthusiastic and started narrating Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, which is the essence <coughs> of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada gave us so many wonderful narrations of Krishna and many, many other acharyas also, and along with devotees, we have a unlimited wealth of knowledge and philosophy centered around Krishna and his pastimes. If you will immer immerse yourself in that more and more, then you're guaranteed to develop your quali the quality of attraction for Krishna, which will eventually turn into love for Krishna, because Krishna is all attractive. But we have to hear about him. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambido Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayan Kita. We do our service, yes, that's important. But we have to take sufficient and quality time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Because by doing so, we awaken our natural attraction for Krishna. We do that through service too. But the fast track is his glories. <laughs> because then you go right into his personality. <laughs> And his personality is so, so amazing. Amazing is not a word, it's undescribable. Okay, any questions, comments? So I tell another pastime? Or do you want to, should we end now? Yeah. Hmm? No. Another pastime? One more. All right, think of a question while I'm giving this pastime. <laughs> or you could also, so how many of you as kids, maybe some of you still do, play hide and seek? Some of us play hide and seek from the temple president. <laughs> 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 where, where are all the devotees? Well, I can't find them. I need some service done. <laughs> I didn't see, right? <laughs> they hide and you don't try to seek them because you can't find them anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, so Krishna and his. Associates, the cow, the, actually the cowherd girls in Radharani, they used to like to play that game. Krishna would play with the gopis. So, so Radharani was, she was the one to cover her eyes and hide away, and all the gopis and Krishna were supposed to find hiding places. So the whole thing is set. And everybody's hiding, and Radharani comes out, she's looking around. And every time she gets close to a gopi, she doesn't find a gopi, she gets close, the gopi starts laughing. <laughs> because they have so much love for Radharani that as soon as she gets near him, her, the her, they laugh. They can't withhold their, their happiness with her, with her present. So she catches all the gopis, at least the ones that are there. Now she has to find Krishna, what to do. All right, so she's looking, where's that rascal? <laughs> she's looking this way, that way. And every time she gets close, Krishna changes positions and goes farther away. Finally, he's going farther away and going into the mountains. <laughs> and Radharani can't find him. She's thinking, I have to do something to catch this 
rascal. <laughs> so she's thinking, hmm. So she starts singing. So sweet when Radharani sings, it's like everything stops, the whole world. <laughs> the trees start to to, you know, offer their fruit and the, the rivers turn in different directions. <laughs> the birds fly upside down. <laughs> When Radharani is singing so, and what is she singing? We all know it's the favorite. It's the number one song on the the ISKCON hit parade. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Krishna can't take it. He's he's stunned. He's frozen. He can't move. And then she then she walks around and she catches him. She said, "I caught you." He said, "You cheated." She said, "No, you're just a bad loser." So this is how you catch Krishna. Pray to Radharani. By dear Ranarani, please help me get the mercy of Krishna. Please let me serve Krishna. So by Radharani's kripa, mercy, everything becomes easy or easier. Yeah. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the manifestation of Srimati Radharani, although he's Krishna himself. He's in her mood. So there's no one Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauda Chaste Namaha The success of our bhakti is the lotus feet of, Sh of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has appeared in this world with the mood of Radharani but he is Krishna himself and uh, by pleasing how do you please how do you please Lord Chaitanya? Go Ranga, go Ranga, go Ranga. Hari Nam Sankirtan. But there's another thing you have to do in order to please Lord Chaitanya. Don't find fault with devotees. As soon as you find fault with devotees, then Mahaprabhu is not happy with you. So it says that if you want the full mercy, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he's called Adosha Darshi. Dosha means fault, Adosha means without fault. So a devotee has to be Adosha Darshi, Darshi means to see. One, one who does not see the faults of others. <laughs>